In this video, we're going to talk about solving systems of equations. Now, there are three ways we're going to practice solving them today. We're going to start with graphing. So when we graph our system of equations, we're going to take a look at this. And notice it's in slope-intercept form. So the y-intercept is 2, and the slope is also 2. So we're going to write the slope as 2 over 1. So there's my slope, and there's my intercept. So when the slope is 2 over 1, that means we're going to go up 2 to the right 1. So here goes. The y-intercept is 2. And from this point, we're going to count up 2 over 1. And we can even go the opposite way. We could go down 2 and over 1 and then connect our dots. Our goal is to find out where these two lines intersect, and that's going to be our solution to the system. So next we have negative 7x minus 1. The y-intercept is negative 1, and the slope is negative 7 over 1. That means we're going to go down 7 and over 1. So we start at negative 1 on the y-axis, and then I'm going to count down 7 spaces. and over 1. And I can do the same thing when I go up 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, over 1. And when I connect the dots, I should get some sort of answer. I think it's right here at negative 1, 1, but we're going to check that in our calculator to be sure because my line was not very straight. So in our calculator, if you have your calculator to use, we're going to go to y equals, and we'll type in 2x plus 2, and then we'll type in negative 7x minus 1. We'll graph our two lines and see where they intersect. Let me get the window back to a normal scale. And so from here, it's hard to tell where they intersect. There's two things we can do. We can go to the table and try to find out where they're the same. And I don't think the table is going to help me right now. So the other way would be to do second trace. That's going to be the calc button. Number five is intersect. So you're going to use your right and left arrows to put your cursor where you think they intersect. And then you just hit enter, enter, enter. Well, there's no way we were going to pick that out by looking. Negative 0.3 repeating is negative 1 third. And then 1.3 repeating is 1 and 1 third. So we were not going to pick that out just by eyeballing the graph. We definitely needed our calculator help with that one. Let's try the next one. So the same thing, these are set up into slope-intercept form. So here I'm going to start at the 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and my slope is negative 1 half. So I will go down 1 and to the right 2, starting from my 5 on the y-axis. Down 1 over 2, down 1 over 2. And you can do that as many times as you want to, and then you just play connect the dots. And a ruler comes in handy here. x minus 7. My y-intercept is negative 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And my slope is the coefficient of x, which is 1. So I'm going to say 1 over 1. Since it's a positive slope, it's going to go up and to the right. So from here, we just start counting up and to the right as many times as you want to. until our lines intersect. Well, that was pretty close. I think it's 8, 1. That's my guess. And I can double check that by plugging it in. In the second equation, 8 minus 7 equals 1. That works. Let's plug it into the first equation. Negative 1 half times 8 is negative 4 plus 5 is 1. So it works in both equations. That means it is truly the solution. It has to work in both equations to be the solution. So that's solving by graphing. We graph them to see where they intersect. Sometimes we use our calculator to help us find that intersection. And if you need to write that down, we 
we put our graphs into y equals, y1 equals, y2 equals. And after we graphed it, we did second trace five to get the intersection. And then you just hit enter, enter, enter from there. All right, let's solve by substitution. So substitution is where we make one of our equations say either x equals or y equals. And from there we substitute. So this equation is set up for us. It says x equals 4y minus 9. So what that means is I'm going to take this expression 4y minus 9 and substitute it in place of x. So I will write the first equation where it says 2x, but instead of x, I'm going to put this 4y minus 9. And then I'll finish the rest of the equation, minus 3y equals 7. It's important to copy everything down. So from here, I'm going to do the distributive property, and I'll get 8y minus 9 minus 3y equals 7. So when I simplify this, 8y minus 3y is 5y. I add 9 to both sides and get 16. So I divide both sides by 5. And y is, let's see, 3.2. Okay, I thought that didn't look right. And here's what I did wrong, if you didn't catch it earlier. When I distributed my 2, 2 times 4 is 8, 2 times 9 should give me 18. So I'm going to add 18 to both sides, and I'll end up with 5y equals 25. And then y is 5. That's much better. Sorry about that mistake. Now that we know what y is, we're going to plug it back in to find out what x is. So you can go to either equation. I think the second equation is probably the easiest because it already says x equals 4y. Now y is 5 minus 9. 20 minus 9 is 11. So my answer is going to be written as an ordered pair. X is 11. Y is 5. And the great thing about systems is we can go back and double check and make sure that this really works in both equations. So we're going to try it. 2 times 11 minus 3 times 5 is 7, just like it's supposed to be. And on the second equation, 4 times 5 minus 9 is 11, just like it's supposed to be. So now we'll move to our next one. We're going to apply the same process. The second equation already says y equals, so I'm going to substitute negative 2x plus 19 in for y. So 3x minus 4, and I'm not going to put y, I'm going to put negative 2x plus 19 equals 12. There's my substitution. And now we'll use the distributive property correctly to simplify this. So 3x minus negative 4 times negative 2 is positive 8x. And then negative 4 times 19, I believe, is negative 76 equals 12. So from here, we'll simplify 3x plus 8x is 11x. If I add 76 to both sides, I get 88. So that when I divide by 11, x equals 8. So we're halfway to our answer. y equals negative 2 x right here. So plug x in 8 plus 19. So negative 2 times 8 is negative 16 plus 19, so y is 3. My answer is 8, 3. So I can plug that in to check. We know it works in the second equation because we just did that, so I'm going to check it in the first equation. 3 times 8 is 24 minus 
4 times 3, which is 12, equals 12. It works in both equations, so it is the solution. So that's our example of substitution. All right, let's move on to elimination. So elimination works really well if your equations are in what we call standard form. The x and the y are on the same side, and across the equal sign is your constant number. And these are both written in that form. So the goal of elimination is to eliminate one of our variables. And we do that by turning them into opposites. So if you look at this, notice that I have a negative 5y and a positive 5y. Well, those are opposites. So when I add these two equations together, I will get 5x and then negative 5y plus 5y cancels equals 15. And now very simply divide by 5, x equals 3. We have our first half of the answer. Now you go back to either equation. It doesn't matter which, which one you choose. I'll just use the first one. 3 minus 5y equals 8. And I'm going to solve for y to get the other half of my answer. So if I subtract 3 from both sides, negative 5y equals 5. Divide by negative 5 and y equals negative 1. So my answer is 3, negative 1. As always, I'm going to double check this and make sure. So I'm going to check it in the second equation since I just used the first one. 4 times 3 is 12. 5 times negative 1 is negative 5. And 12 minus 5 is 7. So we know it works in both equations, so we know for sure that that is the correct answer. So our next elimination example, notice we don't have opposites yet. So we need to create those opposites. You can either create the x's to be opposites or the y's. You get to choose which one looks easier. In this case, they're both about the same. So I'm going to turn my x's into opposites. If I could turn this into a positive 6 and this into a negative 6, they would be opposites. So we will do that by multiplying the entire first equation times 3. So be sure to distribute to every single term. So that'll be 6x minus 15y and 3 times negative 17 is negative 51. For my second equation, I'm going to multiply by 2. 2 times negative 3x is negative 6x. See, we've just created our opposites. 2 times 2y is 4y, and 2 times 9 is 18. Now when I add these equations together, 6x minus 6x cancels. That's my elimination. Negative 15 plus 4 is negative 11y, and then negative 51 plus 18 if we need to check that, I believe it's negative 33. So I will divide both sides by negative 11, and y is positive 3. Now I'm going to substitute back into either of these equations to solve for x. I just picked the first one because it's right there. 2x minus 5 times 3 equals negative 17. So if I get 2x minus 15 equals negative 17, I will add 15 to both sides. And now it says 2x equals negative 2. So when I divide both sides by 2, x is negative 1. So now I have x is negative 1 and y is 3. I'm going to double check in the second equation and make sure it works there as well. Negative 3 times negative 1 is 3. 2 times 3 is 6. And 3 plus 6 is 9. So it checks out in both equations. This is my solution. That's our review of elimination. Now there are two special cases that come up when we're solving systems. And here they are. So in this problem, if I wanted to do elimination, 
I could multiply the top equation times two, and that would give me my opposites, and that would give me 2x minus 10y equals 16. On my bottom equation, I didn't change a thing, so it's negative 2x plus 10y equals negative 10. So notice what happens if I add these together, 2x minus 2x cancels. Negative 10y plus 10y cancels. And then 16 minus 10 is 6. Now, does 0 ever equal 6? No. So this is no solution. So what happens is if all of your variables cancel and this is a false statement, there is no solution. So what happens is these two lines are actually parallel to each other and they are never going to cross. So since our solution is the intersection and there's no intersection, there's no solution. So that's one of our special cases. Our other special case is right here. So I'm going to arrange this top equation into the right form. So I'm going to add 2x to both sides and get 2x plus 3y equals 4. And the second equation says 4x plus 6y equals 8. So if I want to do elimination, I think I'll multiply the top equation times negative 2. And watch what happens. Negative 4x minus 6y equals negative 8. And the second equation didn't change at all. And look what happens if I add these together. Negative 4x plus 4x, negative 6x plus 6y, and then negative 8 plus 8. Everything canceled out, but this time I'm left with a true statement. So this problem has infinitely many solutions. Because in this example, these two equations were the exact same line. So if I graphed them, here's one line, and here's the other line, right on top of that line. So every point on that line is a solution. There are infinitely many. So that's the other special case that could happen. Now we're going to see what happens if I have a quadratic equation and a linear equation. And we're going to look at some ways to solve that. There are two ways to do this. One of them is to use algebra, and the other is to just graph it. So we're going to start with the algebra, just in case you're not using a calculator right now. So what I've noticed here is they both say y equals. So I'm going to do a bit of substitution. I'm going to put 5x plus 15 in place of y. So 5x plus 15 equals x squared plus 2x plus 5. Now we know from our experience that if I want to solve this quadratic equation, I've got to make it say equals 0. So let's do that. Subtract 5x and you get negative 3x. Subtract 15 and you get negative 10. So now all I have to do is factor x squared minus 3x minus 10. So I need factors of negative 10 that add up to negative 3. That's going to be x minus 5, x plus 2. So to finish solving this, we have to set each factor equal to 0. For the first factor, x minus 5 equals 0, x is 5. For the second one, x is negative 2. So there are two answers to this equation, to this system. So we have x is 5. We're going to substitute to find out the y-coordinate, and then we're going to find out a y-coordinate for x equals negative 2 as well. So the second equation looks easier to me. So if I plug this 5 in, y equals 5 times 5 plus 15. So let's see, 25 plus 15 should give me 40. So one of my solutions is 5, 40 which is not going to fit on this graph, but we'll look at it anyway. The other solution, y equals 5 times negative 2 plus 15. 
So negative 10 plus 15 is 5. So the other solution is negative 2, 5. So why are there two answers to this system? Well, take a look at the possibilities. Here's my quadratic and here's my linear. It's possible for the line to intersect in two, po in two points. And that's how we get two solutions. Another possibility is my quadratic and my line intersect in one place and there's one solution. And the third possibility is the quadratic and the linear never intersect and there are no solutions. So we're on the first one where the quadratic and the linear intersect in two places. So we have our answer, but if you wanted to graph it, we could look at our calculator and we would say y equals, let's see, we'll clear out everything that's there, y equals x squared plus 2x plus 5. And in the second equation, we'll write 5x plus 15. And let's graph it. Now, if we didn't already know that the answer was 540 and negative 25, we would look at this and go, well, I, there's part of this graph that I can't see. So you can always zoom in to try to see more of the graph. So I'm going to go zoom in. Actually, I'm going to zoom out because I don't want to get closer. I want to get further out. So we're going to zoom out and it'll graph it again for us. And we'll, we might be able to see it. There's one here and there's one here. So now we can use that second trace five to calculate the intersection. So let's try it. Second trace five. Use your right and left arrows to get you to where you think they intersect and then enter, enter, enter negative 2, 5. We're going to do it again. Second trace 5. And this time I'm going to go to the other point. Now if you use the up and down arrows, it's going to switch between the quadratic graph between y1 and y2. Where did our cursor go? Oh, there it is. Okay. So I'm going to stop right there where it looks like they intersect and hit enter, enter, enter. And there it is, 540. So we can solve it algebraically and we can solve it by graphing in the calculator. So just to recap, when you have a system of equations, our goal is to find out where they intersect and that is the solution. If the lines are parallel, there are no solutions because they are never going to intersect. If the lines, we say they coincide, they're one on top of the other, it's the same line, there are infinitely many solutions. I forgot the word many. Infinitely many. So there's our lesson on systems of equations.